Hi there, it's Ola here and I'm coming here with a new video. Last week I've talked about things that you shouldn't say to a disabled person and this week I'd like to talk about the opposite, so things that you should say or one thing that you should do when you're with disabled people. I hope you liked the previous video and if you haven't seen it I'm gonna link it below and I'll also link it up here. It's probably gonna be good if you watch both of these videos because today's video is kind of a response to the previous one so make sure to check it out. So the first and the very important thing that you could say is if you need anything I'm here. That way you're letting know the person you're talking to that if they need any help they can always ask you for it but at the same time you're not kind of pushing them into receiving help from you what I've talked about in the previous video and when you say that you are there if they need anything you're saying that you're not only gonna be there for them when they need help with something physical but you're also gonna be there when they need someone to talk to I should probably say here that not all of the things I'm gonna mention not all of the phrases I'm gonna use are exactly what you should say but you should just let the other person, the disabled person know what your intentions are and what you want them to know so you don't have to say that in the same words but you can always show it in other way so the second point is letting them know that they know best what they need and that's probably very important for people who work on doing things more accessible for disabled people or who work with disabled people on just making their lives easier because I've met a lot of people who were trying to do things more accessible for me or for other disabled people but they were doing it in their own way so they had no idea what we needed but they thought that they know so instead of asking us what we actually need they were just assuming what that is but I've also met a lot of amazing people who were really asking and were really caring about what we need and not just assuming that so that's very important because disabled people know best what they can do what they can't do and what they need so you should listen to them the third point is letting someone disabled doing things their own way because a lot of disabled people find their own ways of doing a lot of things and it may look weird or strange to you and it may take longer than when you do these things so you should just let the person know that you support them and that their way is as good as any other way of doing whatever they're doing so the fourth point is take your time or don't rush because it's normal that disabled people can take longer doing some things like for example I take way longer packing my groceries in the shop and I've met a lot of people working in shops who just always try to rush me and it's kind of understandable because they have a lot of clients but it's also not understandable because I just can't do it any faster. But I've also met a lot of people who noticed that I was stressed and was trying to do my best to move as quickly as possible and they were telling me that I don't have to rush, that I have time. And that's just very nice. So if you're ever in a situation like that, just consider telling the person that they don't have to rush because that actually may make them move faster because they're just gonna be less stressed about it. So the fifth point is saying that what they think or feel is valid and that's very important for example with undiagnosed illnesses or disabilities because people can often just recognize that something is not right because it's their body and they know best so that's why with your actions or behavior you should let the person know that you think that what they feel or think is actually valid because believe me that that's gonna help them way more than if you weren't agreeing with them and the sixth point is letting the person know that they are more than their disability to you. So it's probably quite cringe to say that to their face, but you can easily do that with your actions and just show them that you care more about other parts of their lives than their disability. Because unless you are their doctor, then their medical condition shouldn't be the most important thing about them to you. In a video about things that you shouldn't say to a disabled person, I mentioned asking about what happened to them. Because that's just rude and you're literally asking only about their disability and not about anything else. So another way of asking a person about their life is saying what's your story? Because that way you're giving them an option to tell you the full story with a disability in it or just a story that they want to tell you. And believe me that if you want to learn something about a new person that you meet, then you're gonna learn way more when they tell you things that they actually want to tell you, rather than just telling you things that you want to know, but they maybe not want to tell you about it. So the eighth point is, rather than telling them that they're motivation to you, 
you can always ask them who motivates them or who inspires them. Because like I said in the other video, most disabled people don't like being called motivation or inspiration. So by asking them about who inspires them, that way not only can you learn about other amazing people who can inspire you, but you can also learn more about the person that you're talking to at the moment. And disabled people really aren't asked often about who inspires or motivates them, so when you do that, you're also getting some extra friendship points. But anyway, if you really, really have to let this person know that they are your inspiration and they motivate you every single day, then you still don't have to tell them that it's your disability that inspires you or motivates you. You can always tell them that what they do, like what they do for their job or what their passion is, that that motivates you. Or you can just tell them that you'd like to be as good as they are in something that they do or as passionate as they are. But see, you don't have to tell them that you're inspired by what they do with their disability. Each person can be inspiring or motivating in so many different ways. So you can always find something in that person that you're talking about other than their disability. And the last point is not something that you can say, but it's something that you can do. And it's include disabled people in whatever you do or in whatever your group of friends does. And don't decide for them if they can come somewhere or do, or do something. Just let them decide because, like I said, they know best what their abilities are and what they can do and what they need. So don't just exclude disabled people from your plans because you think that they wouldn't be able to do something. It's much better to invite them and make it as accessible as possible and let them decide if they are able to do that or not able to do that. Don't just assume that they will not be able to do that. You can get some activity, but it doesn't mean that they have to take part in it. They can just go with you, they can spend time with you, but they don't have to take part in everything that you do. But it would still be nice if you invite them because that just shows that you care about them. So yeah, just let them decide if they are able to go or not and if they can do something or not. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. Please leave a comment to let me know what you thought about this video and what you thought about my 10 things that you should say or do to a disabled person. And also let me know about other types of videos that you'd like me to film. Thank you very much again and I'll see you next time.